So today we have an exciting show. This is the most guests I've ever had on my podcast. We have 29 guests today. <laughs> and uh, it's going to go by quick. Um, everyone here is speaking in part of In Bloom. And we have the founder slash uh, CEO, I would say, um, of In Bloom. So I want to start first before we do intros. What is In Bloom? What's the mission behind it? Why did you create it? Robin, go. Robin, go. 20 <laughs> <Okay>. seconds. <laughs> yeah. So what is In Bloom? In Bloom is a beautiful relation, love and relationship summit that is being held every year in Vancouver, BC in April. And this is our second annual. And the intention behind this summit was to bring together world-class experts, relationship coaches, people, therapists, psycho the people that are on this, on this uh, podcast that are trusted, that are mm -hmm. experienced and can teach us solid, practical relationship skills to improve the relationships in our lives. I wholeheartedly agree that, or I, I wholeheartedly believe that there is nothing more important in our lives than the relationships that we have with ourselves and with each other. And I want to, I, I want, um, I strive in my life to have really close, intimate, authentic relationships mm -hmm. with everybody that I come across, especially the people that I love the most. And I think that we can all learn to be better at love because there's really nothing more important than that. So this is my first year attending, but from what I gather, you do things right. I mean, this is only year two and you've had rock stars on, on your panel um, and also the amount of talent there. Uh, so I'm assuming that's going to ripple into everything, including um, food, beverages. It just sounds good. It's going to be a, a, an amazing I like experience. Like food was the first thing you're like, food. <laughs> yes. So John, you know, I, I'm known in my life for, um, for hosting. <laughs> no, I, mean, yes. I don't i don't go over i always, always go overboard i want people nice. to be surprised and just treated like kings and queens mm -hmm. that we all are and i really um i wanted to do that for our guests and so what better way to do it we're doing it at the fairmont one of the best hotels in vancouver and of course the food is amazing i've got like beautiful decor and um and the best speakers for us to learn together in an environment and come to this is the other the other main thing i missed to say is how important it is for us to come together in community. Mm, and this is yeah. a community that we are building together. You all have incredible loving communities. And I also believe that we're healers. We're here to heal this world. I know that sounds very altruistic, but it's true. And coming together to learn and grow in a, in a space of love, it, it, will, it does make a huge impact. Thank you. Well, let's get to... Um everyone that's coming. So uh, just yeah. quick uh, intros and uh, kind of like um, what you're going to be, what you're going to be doing um, as far yeah. as uh, what you're going to be talking about, what you're passionate about and a little bit of who you are. So yeah, there's a helicopter. Um, Dr. Jody Kerrigan, what, why don't we start with you? That would be great. John. I can't even believe we get to meet each other. Here's the thing. If you don't have a ticket for this event, you probably need to get it right now because I, this is the first time in a very long time that I've been in a room of people where I cannot wait to sit mm. in awe of the expertise. Okay. So oftentimes as speakers, we get to go to these things and every single one of us has been a keynote at some event many times. I speak 130 times a year. This is the first wow. time I'm staying for the whole weekend because mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear everybody else's shit. Do you understand? Because yeah. I, <laughs> often, I, I take everything everybody on this panel says and makes it my own. So wow. now <laughs> I love the honesty of that. Come on. So <laughs> we're going to that you've got us all in one place and a little human named Gabor. We're all just going to frolic and talk about <laughs> the, thing that is the hardest thing to do on this planet mm -hmm. in this moment, which is to stay, to stay connected. Mm -hmm. We are in a loneliness epidemic. And so I'm going to talk a lot about artificial intimacy. 
the AI that is really the thing that so many people are talking about these days. Uh, I know Esther was there last year and Esther and Brene just did this beautiful conversation about it. And so I really want to have some hard conversations around why it's becoming more and more difficult to fall in love, to stay in love um, and just what it's going to take to do that. And from a mental health perspective, I got to tell you, you know, what I think all the time in terms of this loneliness mental health crisis is really, it, it's not a crisis to me. It makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. we are wired for connection and we've mm -hmm. never been more disconnected in the history of the free world than we are in this moment. Thank you. Can't wait to hang with you. Uh, Todd, who are you and what I, are you doing at, the, at In Bloom? Um, I don't know who I am yet. I'm still figuring <laughs> hey, that out. Thanks for being honest because most of us go. We're can, all on that journey, man. If you can tell me. Um, because 25 like, years I don't know therapy, who I am and I'll be serving your doors. I still so 25 years of therapy. I, don't, I, can I can help you. I can help Great. You. <laughs> Sign me up. Help all of us. Uh, my you, name's please. Todd. Hi. It's good to see and connect with some of you that I haven't before. Um, I'm talking about sex. I'm a sex therapist and many people think that means that I'm just talking about dicks and clits and holes all day. Um, but I'm not. The topic of my talk is it's not just sex. So it's not just dicks and clits and holes. I'm going to be talking a lot about cultural issues. I'm going to be talking a lot about relational issues. I'm going to be framing sex um, as a cultural and relational issue about attachment, about religion, um, about closeness, about anything you can think about that's beyond the reductionism that I think we've all grown up with about sex being about penetration or about body parts or genitals. Um, so my goal is to really help people find uh, expansiveness and how they think and experience sex and express themselves and their bodies. Love it. Wow. That's it's exciting. Be, it's going to be an exciting talk. Oops. Sean, <laughs> Thrilling. Sean, who are you and what are you doing in Bloom? Hey, uh, Sean Galanos, love coach, writer, speaker. I will be 100% honest. I infiltrated the first in Bloom last year. I reached out to Robin <laughs> and I was like, Robin, let me come. Let me give free love advice. What's it going to take? I got to be there. And uh, I'm so glad I did. It was, I mean, the production value of the event is insane. Absolutely insane. From like how well you take care of all the speakers and the guests and, and all the, the participants, like it was out of control. Robin, are the big flowers coming back or what's going yeah, on there? Of course they are, Sean. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, big, huge flowers, the biggest flowers I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> I am doing a workshop on Sunday on emotional availability. And so we're going to talk about how uh, vulnerability is a superpower. This is going to be the first workshop at 9 a.m. So I'm really excited to like caffeine up and get real intimate with people. It's going to be a very hands-on workshop. We're not going to like touch each other. I was like, but it's what gonna... does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a massage <laughs> workshop, you know. Nine a.m. on a Sunday. I'm kidding. No, no yeah, hands, but, but it is very, very interactive. If we have to. Uh, if we have to. With consent. With consent, we can. Of course. Uh, very interactive workshop on the power of vulnerability, the power of connection, what it means to drop uh, the defenses, let people in. So there's going to be some really fun exercises and I'm really excited to sort of play with everybody who shows up there. Just <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh, cool. Thank you. Very exciting. Nay, who are I'm, you and what are you doing at Inbloom? I'm like a teenager. I'm giggling that Sean's excited. <laughs> Everyone that shows up there. Yeah. Oh. Um, and I'm just going to echo what Jody said. I feel so unbelievably excited for this weekend. And I'm, I know there are going to be several moments where I'm going to be like, Danae, be cool. <laughs> you got to be cool right now. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm Danae Logan and I am a marriage and family therapist in Los Angeles. I primarily work with couples and I am going to be facilitating a workshop at In Bloom on the practice of interdependence and what I feel like that looks like as we evolve in the ways that we are relating to one another. And, um, you know, I think while we all absolutely need connection and um, there's so much healing that comes in connecting with one another, I think we are finding that the ways that we have been conditioned to connect need to evolve for a lot of reasons. I think, you know, Jody, you were talking about AI a little bit and with like all of the technology in the world and all of the ability to take care of ourselves and not maybe partner for the same reasons our grandparents' grandparents partnered. Um, 
we sort of need to redefine how we do that, what that looks like, and how we take a lot of personal responsibility for the energy that we are bringing into our relationship. So if we're shifting away from sort of codependency or hyper-independence, what does it look like to be a little bit more interdependent in the way that we are relating to one another? So we're going to get into it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and <laughs> Vanessa and I, we're going to talk about relationships and uh, I guess what not to do. <laughs> that, that's sexy. Um, um, no. We're leaving all the sex to Todd. Todd, you're gonna you're gonna take other sex. Yeah, that's not our right. expert. Yeah, I think that because we are talking or speaking together, what we really want to focus on is the evolution of relationships. So, um, what it looks like to be partnered nowadays with the new landscape, like all of these tools that we have as conscious partners, right? Um, experimenting with like, what do you want your partnership to look like? Because you don't have to follow the blueprint that's been passed down to you from generations prior, right? Um, and so we really want to challenge the audience to reconsider some of the things that they are coming into their relationships with like assumptions and start making them question like, is that what you want or is it what you think you should want? Right. Um, and to start to really just question how they've been structuring the, the relationships, not just romantic in their lives up until this point and um, give people some more freedom in structuring them to be the most fulfilling that they can be. And also, um, you know, the primary colors, the foundational stuff, um, you know, stuff that we all talk about, but just uh, touch upon because I think it's easy to forget. So, um, you know, all the stuff that we learn in therapy school, uh, whether it's communication or, you know, love languages, attachment styles, and all these other things, uh, reading subtext, stuff like that. Um, and all of it's pulled from our story. And uh, Vanessa and I, you know, we've been together for six years. And um, it's uh, it's always evolving, growing, and it's we're nice. learning. For, yeah, we, we're, we, we don't want to present ourselves as the, the, the model, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I have a lot of questions from the community, and I thought um, we could tackle some of these. John, I have okay. a question real quick. Will you guys yeah. be doing any ice baths during your <laughs> fireside I chat? I don't or... ice, Sean. Okay, don't you know. don't ice. But John can ice while you answer questions in a cozy um, chair. You mm -hmm. know, I think um, ever since I did my first talk with Mind Body Green 10 years ago, I've been kind of the, the wild card. I'm the guy when I'm speaking, um, everyone in the audience is like, who let this person in? So, yeah, there may, there may be ice. There may be no pants. I don't know. We'll see. Who's to say? Yeah. Um, Show I'm up gonna, and find out. I'm going to let you uh, pick a question. We've got a bunch of questions. And here's the thing I think would be interesting um, for, the, for the listener is um, that we don't all have to agree, and that's okay. Mm. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of it, actually, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. There are three of them on this screenshot of seven, eight, that all talk about the avoidant, which Danae, I know you and I love to talk about. The avoidant really gets put in the, the bad guy position quite frequently in, uh, in our vernacular out there. Um, fell in love with an, with an avoidant. I ended it because no commitment, but I miss her terribly what to do. How to effectively communicate needs or emotions with an avoidant without attacking them. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like there's something in this idea of partnering with an avoidant that we might be able to speak to a little bit. Hey, Robin, what are you? Do you lean toward avoidant or anxious? And I mean, we're all swinging anxious. Toward yeah. Oh, yeah. Anxious. Full on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I, I'm, to, I'm dating somebody right now who I'm totally into. And like, I've got this anxiousness coming upon me. And I think mm -hmm. this is maybe new when you're dating with somebody like, yeah. and I'm like, holy shit, Robin, you are fucking anxious. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pulling myself back. Like, and like, whoa, like, I'm, I'm so glad I'm aware. And I'm taking my lessons that I've learned from all of you mm -hmm. and everything else I'm doing at work to not act on that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh yeah, it's really clear what I am. Is he chained to your desk? And I think right I'm now? dating an avoidant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I'm so sorry, sweetie, if I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to jump in with something I saw you write actually yesterday, I think, Todd, that was talking about the extent to which we have sort of made these attachment styles identities. And it's mm -hmm. not true. Yes, it's they not. Are not. It's like, not, right? I know. We're labeling. And, yeah, yeah. Well, but also, you know, like I tend to run pretty avoidant. And if I am in a relationship or dating someone avoidant, 
oh, does the anxious energy start to come mm. to the surface? So it's understanding oh, yeah. like yeah. there's a lot that this relationship dynamic is evoking within me, but I don't know that this is necessarily, um, you know, like a label that I'm going to place upon myself. Like I, I have no choice but to be this way in relationships, you know? Well, then let, let this be the question kind of appealing uh, the label of anxious and, and avoidant and those attachment styles, but basically how to effectively communicate to your partner. And I know that's a very general broad strokes, but I think it throws a wide net. Um, one tip, how do you, how do you effectively communicate to your partner? Let's start with, your with, with Todd. And needs. Yeah. Yeah. Todd? About your attachment needs. Well, I mean, like I said, your emotions and needs. your needs, I think was the original and it says without attacking them, but I think that was the. The avoidance spin, but I just wonder from your point, John, like what would be one tip maybe that you could give somebody who's struggling to communicate their their needs or their emotions? I I think uh for me it's always been um because I, I tend to, to to verbally vomit. I tend to not be responsible and um you know uh stamp that as being vulnerable thinking that it's a good thing when I'm actually hijacking space, right? So uh for me it's um pulling back and, and you don't have to tell your partner everything that you're feeling. So for me, it's kind of putting that emotional speed bump where like, how are these words? How's this statement? How's this behavior going to impact my partner? And then, and then, you know, choosing, you know, but kind of mm -hmm. sitting with what you want to communicate, whether it's, you know, your, your, your needs, how you feel all of that. So putting a, a filter instead of just, you know, vomiting. Mm -hmm. Sean tip communication. I just, I just think, well, first of all, I think people who tend towards having more avoidant tendencies need to learn how to ask for space mm. instead of just disappearing. <laughs> and people who tend I feel attacked, to, Sean. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, it's a, it's just, it's a suggestion. Yeah. They have and, to come back. Uh, pe people who tend towards more anxiety need to like share with them what the importance of connection means to them. Mm. Right. I think those are just two really like nuts and bolts mm. things that we can do. But something that I want to say is like, we got to stop demonizing people with avoidant Thank you. attachment Thank you, Sean. issues. Thank you. And yeah. because you know what? I've dated people with anxiety issues and it's not a walk in the park either. Okay. <laughs> that shit is hard. Ow. And it's maybe why I'm running away. I don't, wow. I don't want to blame, but I feel attacked. <laughs> Why does it always come back to the war of the anxious and the avoidance? Everywhere we go. I love it's it. It's too good. It's, it's too good. Too it's good. too easy. <laughs> oh, so good. Can I just tell you something? Regardless of, I, I would agree with you so much, Danae, about this idea of, of labeling people that really gets us into tricky spaces. Because you can be avoidant with somebody and anxious with the next. And so when you identify somebody as, or yourself as I'm an anxious person, I'm an avoidant, you play different roles in different relationships. And what I think is the universal truth for all of us, if we were to take away the labels that gets us so messed up so many times, is that we all desire to be seen. Mm. We all desire to feel felt. Yes. And when you have the capacity to do that for another, you can't give it away if you've never received it. That's the hard mm -hmm. part. And when you are in a place to be able to sort of feel like I need this person to do something else, the place you always have to start is with you. And when you can regulate your body, get your prefrontal cortex back on, you have access to the best parts of you to be able to give that away. But when we start to get in our head about, am I anxious? Am I avoidant? Are they fucked up? This is a psychopath. This is an asshole. Narcissist. Holy Christ. If I, if I, if I wrote punch the word narcissist, I, oh. how many times, he's not a fucking narcissist, bitch. Okay. You have got a problem oh too. All right. So, hey, let's make a t shirt that says throat punch these words. And on the back, it's like narcissist, oh you know, avoid it. Yeah. They just don't buy that. that ever was. Okay. Because that'll be their next Real Love Perfect. Ready merch. That'll be merch. <laughs> oh, I'm so good. I'm excited because when you start calling your partner by a, a personality disorder, Okay, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. none of us are born with. Right. You acquire as a result of responding to your experiences of relationship in the world. So you are not a narcissist. You are not a psychopath. You yeah, are responding to the relationships that have occurred to you. That is where we evoke empathy for another. Mm -hmm. And when we can, that's this is the heart of every couple's therapy. Danae, I mean, we can talk about the, the dance that is intimacy. When I can get two people to look at each other and understand their story, I promise you. 
I promise you. They may not end up together, but you will leave in a much more healed space than if you are in this place of this is a narcissist and you fucked up my life. Maybe true. Yeah. However, if you're going to heal, you need to be speaking completely differently. And so it's often rooted in when we start to understand this concept of avoidant, anxious, but we're all something on the spectrum. So put it aside, understanding how we respond and what we need in relationship, I'm all on board for. But this idea then of being able to sort of, I dated a narcissist or this guy's a psychopath or this one's a something, oh, Christ, it's trouble. I think we live in a world where there's a lot of pointed fingers. And so when you label anything of someone, you know, and you're pointing a finger, you're not, you know, holding up a mirror. So the Ooh, collectively, nice. there's a lot of that happening, especially in wellness, you know, and social media. Sure. Yeah, I wanted to say two things connected to that. One, in terms of the whole identity and attachment style as identity, um, and kind of what you're saying, Jody, is that um, most of the people who are saying, I am this, I am that, they're not connected to a narrative about why they're even saying that in the first place mm -hmm. about their history. They're more so caught in some kind of dysregulated place in the here and now about what's happening in their dynamic without any real connection, John, to what you're saying, which is their history, their story, and their trauma and how that story and narrative is informing how they're interacting with their partner. And so, you know, I, I'm in a new relationship now and probably anxious and avoidant, and it's just fab. But, um, you know, when you're saying, what, how do you have these conversations? I'm like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, I don't, you know, I mean, the, the conversation was first with my therapist. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, well, no, first it was myself with myself yeah. spiraling, yeah. then it was with my journal reflecting, then it was with my therapist mm -hmm. talking and reframing and calming mm -hmm. me down. And then it was with my partner. So I really needed to first connect to why I needed, why I thought I needed what I needed in the first place, because I think it's so easy, especially if you um, are more anxious to want your partner to manage that anxiety and to think that, uh, especially if you're coming from a place where you're dysregulated. So, um, you know, I think the communication first has to happen, John, as you were just saying, with yourself in terms of looking in the mirror and understanding what's coming up for me right now, as opposed to what isn't my partner doing? Because if you approach it from that place, it will come off as a criticism. You will further elicit them to pull away. You will become more anxious, et cetera. So developing more of a connection to the narrative about that anxiety is really, at least for me and some of my clients, I think you probably agree, really important in terms of how we decide to communicate our needs. Well, I'd love to jump on that too, Todd, because I love what you're saying. It's, this, it's going back to that idea that Danae said, personal responsibility. And what I will say as somebody who can lean more avoidant is... I think it's really important for all of us to get in touch with what happens in my body when I am dysregulated, because it looks different for everybody. And as somebody who does lean, like if I'm in an, a relationship that activates more of that avoidant tendency, that, dis, that dysregulation in my body feels very different than when I'm in more of an anxious dysregulated place. And so for me, that can look like um, numbness, shutdown, avoidance, um, irritation, right. Versus like a more of a panicky feeling, which I have felt because again, we, we tend to swing on this pendulum. Right. Um, and so I think so much of, of these relational tools, and I know everybody would agree with this. It's like continuing to come back to our body and our toolkit around what is happening right now in my internal system, sitting with that, tracking it, questioning it, doing what you just said, Todd, which is like working through the steps of like, what's happening for me and why before we then bring it and kind of blah out there and, and, and not take that responsibility first. Right. So like what, that's a good question. I think for the audience, like what does dysregulation look like for you? What does it feel like for you? Um, are you even aware? Do you know what you feel like, look like, sound like when you are dysregulated? That's a, probably a really good place to start. Also, Todd, I love that you gave us kind of a tear meaning, but before it hits my partner, yep. it starts with the conversation with me then Journal. some journaling, yeah. then a therapist. I mean, you know, uh, it's going to be different for everyone, but just the fact that you have a system mm -hmm. so there isn't that knee-jerk default to just, you know, go to them. Go to them. That's, that's really good. Also, I'm going to say, Todd, you know, on social, you present as, as uh, this tall, sexy person. Right now, it looks like you're sitting in a high chair. And you're just very... <laughs> I'm really a, I'm hey, really a man. Point, I'm a baby. Like, you definitely went for the best hair. I'm here I'm down. Down. Look at that hair. Yeah. I'm an infancy. Okay. Well, I just want everyone to know when you're coming to in bloom, just don't have expectations because I'm short. You know what I'm saying? When I meet people on the street, I get so insecure because I'm like, fuck, they know, they think I'm taller. I'm not six feet. 
But um, um, anyway, thank you for that. Hey, let's do one question, and I want to do something really fun because the whole point of this to, is kind of to pull the curtain back and, and, and for everyone to kind of get to know each other. Um, and if you're listening to this, it's a week away. So if you're listening to this, we're going to give uh, out a, a discount code at the end of this. Get your last minute tickets. Yes. Uh, so you still Weekend. have time. Weekend. Oh, weekend. a week away from yes. the event. Yes, sorry. Yes. yes. And then it's a weekend um, away if you're going to come to Vancouver with us, right? Hey, listen, if, if, if this is high school, this weekend, Robin's house, risky business. It's the place. <laughs> Erica, Guess I what? I have room for everyone. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, the, part, it's the, the biggest party of the, the, party the year. Of yeah, it's the place to be. Um, um, how to differentiate between peace and boredom in a relationship? How do you know if it's peace? How do you know if it's boredom? Can it be both? Hmm. Also, what's I wrong mean, with think, boredom? Yeah. yeah. You know? I, I, I think that, find I this question there. interesting. Let's start there. They're all like boredom. Because the, the fact that the, they're anxious just, that something's that wrong oh, if, something, if they're bored. Yeah. We're just know. used to the chaotic calm. Yeah. Yeah, I think relationships um, can have boredom, and that's okay. Yeah, I right. think we have a I think we have a problem in our culture with thinking that boredom is a negative thing that needs to be mm. filled at all times. Hence the constant this on our phones, right? Um, and boredom is actually the space where creativity is born. Boredom is actually a space where self awareness is found. Boredom is the space where so much wonderful magic can happen. And so maybe it's time that we actually start looking at the word and the feeling of boredom. A little bit more closely. Also, if you're bored, that's your responsibility. Don't put that shit on your partner. I say it to my kid all the time. I say all the time, your boredom is not my responsibility. And she's four, so I stand by that statement. Vanessa, you sound like my therapist. She's always trying to get me to like sit with boredom and yeah. not go for the distraction, the easy fix. And that, that is where creativity comes from. We're so terrified. I probably of just it. stop paying her and just start paying you. I can, just like I say to my four year old, you text me anytime and I'll just remind you. Your boredom is your responsibility, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you got another one? Um, Todd, you know I was just fucking with you, right? Now I'm feeling very insecure that you're mad at me. And it's going to be weird when we meet. No, that's oh, just my face. Exactly. <laughs> my codependency is I raging right now. I actually right forgot now. about it. I'm now caught in my own narrative about my relationship. Uh, <laughs> now triggering this all is for me. Well, the, the <laughs> flip side. Point, Vanessa, I think that question is really what I hear a lot about is – the idea is that when we settle into a relationship with somebody, am I bored? Uh, is this mm -hmm. peaceful? Like, should I get the fuck out? Cause it's not exciting anymore. Like, I think that's the question so much these days that I have people like I'm in my, you know, we've, we've been together for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, or we have three kids and they're moving out and like, God, I just don't feel it anymore. What does it mean? Like, what if I'm not in love? Like, what is that? Like, and mm -hmm. I'm so excited for all of your takes on this because I think in this really quick world, we expect mm. that that rush of emotion and connection should stay there all the time, but you're supposed to get, listen, you're supposed to be bored with yeah. the same person that you wake up with every time. Or if you've known each other for a while, or you share children with each other, like they're supposed to piss you off. Conflict yeah. is a necessary part of meaningful relationships. It isn't whether it's supposed to be there or not, it's what you do with it that matters. Also mm -hmm. is boredom, right? You should look at your yeah. partner and be like, holy fuck, it used to be exciting. That's normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also expansion and contract them. That's like such an important thing that I talk about all the time, even in our relationship. Like in the beginning, I would push back on him all the time and be like, it was like the anxiety would come up when we would be in a natural place of contraction. Right. And it's like, it's not supposed to be an expansion all the time. This is a normal cycle in relationships. We move away, we come together. We move away, we come together. Right. And for a lot of us, we feel like we should be together all the time and it should be fireworks and it should be this and it should be that. And it's like, that, my friend, is probably more toxic codependency than it is actually loving relationship, to use two words that are probably a little played out. Um, and so, again, questioning why are you so uncomfortable in the contraction? right? In the boredom, I think is paramount for all of us across all relationships, right? And across our life. Yeah. One thing that I've learned from our experience is that it's cumulative, you know, mm. um, cause I go high and low, uh, I'm an Aries, I'm, you know, chasing dopamine. Um, I want to also remind people who, who are dating that the first cup, you know, the, the, the first collision and that spark and all the chemicals and yeah, the, the person can do nothing wrong. And you're trying to discover, you want to know everything about that person. You, that's, 
that's not forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's uh, it's not sustainable know, either. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. It's not sustainable either. Yeah. The fireworks yeah. forever. Yeah. It's not sustainable. I mean, enjoy it. <laughs> Just know that it it isn't forever. That yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's it's a, it's more of a glossy poster than the. Uh, well, the real and view. and this new the, the uh, uh, capacity now to always get something new so easily mm -hmm. on right. social media uh, to yeah. reconnect to yeah. your boyfriend from high school to mm -hmm. be able to sort of get that adoration from somebody online is something that I'm so mm -hmm. interested to hear you all speak about because I think that's the place that, you know, we really have to talk about. There's no script for this. When, if somebody does, if you don't feel, if you're bored, if you don't feel sexy anymore, if you don't feel like you're getting your needs met, it's so easily accessible to get that somewhere else mm -hmm. where nobody needs to know about it. So how do we counteract that? I think becomes the question, or do we, do we transition Danae, as you speak about into like this new way of operating that it doesn't have to be the way, the binary way that it's always, you're either married or you're not. What does that look like? Is that the sense? I mean, the data would say that our babies and our grandbabies will no longer engage in, um, traditional marriage in <laughs> ways, right? So what is that about and why is that necessary? What does that do to procreation? What does that mean for a sense of security when we talk about attachment styles and kids where we know we need predictability and all of those things to Let's promote a positive with, attachment? So um, how does that play out in a few generations from now? I just asked another question, sorry, I don't know, that's probably not on your phone, but that's the question I have. But I think you are speaking to the way, and I, I love you're speaking my language, Jody, that um, we've really sort of pedestal, pedestalized romantic relationships and that we've made these things like, this should be my higher power. I should get all of the things from this one source that not only an entire community of people used to offer, but that we used to look for deeper meaning in other aspects of our lives than this relationship. And I think it's so much to put on this one entity that could not conceivably have the capacity to do and be all of that for any of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Uh, it's one of my lessons that I have learned and am, am learning here. Um, I have the Prowse questions from Vanity Fair, and I'm going to end by um, just letting them come out of the hopper randomly. Right. So I'm just going to throw a question at you. And then um, this is, I thought a fun way for us to, uh, for, the audience get to get to know each other. Are you going to call on us teacher style? What is that teacher style? Like, are you going to say someone's name and ask the question? Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. Okay. Just so I know, just so I know the parameters here. Why is that teacher? Oh, I see teacher style. Yeah. My name is John Kim. So teacher style, I was numbered. There were six John Kims when I was growing up in high school. And so I was a number. So anyway, oh. yeah. Uh, Danae, what, number, what is the trait you most love in yourself? Oh. <laughs> in the deep end, what right away. That? Um... What is this? my curiosity? Mm. You know, I, I, uh, I know you and I do uh, think you're very a curious person. I really appreciate you, that about you as well. Thank it's very you, contagious. John. Yes. Todd, what is your idea of perfect happiness? That question might be loaded. <laughs> That's so loaded. No <laughs> my idea of that is it's a fantasy. But perfect mm. happiness. It doesn't yeah, exist. I love it. Amen. Sorry. Amen. Dr. Jody, if you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, who or what would it be? <laughs> oh, my God. I, <laughs> my daughter, because I think she's the luckiest fucking human on the planet, and she's mm. going to kill me. Oh, I love that. Talk about narcissism. <laughs> <sighs> Obsessed. I wrote a best-selling book called Kids These Days, and if you watch me with my own personal children, you wouldn't buy the book. <laughs> I cannot wait to meet you. Uh -oh. oh, she's the best. She's like Burton. You, this is mine. It's real, real, real. so good. So good. That's it. That's all. I don't know. Okay. Robin, what is your greatest excitement currently? In Bloom 2024. Oh, I knew it. I knew I should have <laughs> saved that for the end. Shit, sorry. <laughs> Walked right into that one, John. Yes. I I'm love serious, it. though. I'm very, this is, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Sean, what's the quality you most uh, like in a woman? And also, what's the quality you most like in a man? <clears throat> oh, well, I think I, lo I love a woman's... Oh. Be careful, <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I, I, I was just going to say I love a woman's sensuality. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And also ability to like really drop into on a deep emotional level. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and with men, I think I love their ability to play in a non-serious way. Mm. Yeah. Vanessa, what is your greatest extravagance? Extravagance? Yeah. I mean, I'm a Taurus. Everything for me is the greatest extravagance. Um, the best food, the best sheets. I mean, if, if I had to mm. think of it, it would be my, it would be food. My mm. greatest extravagance is always going to be food related. <laughs> food and sleep related. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Let's end with this last question. Um, you know, Tim Ferriss does this thing at the end of his podcast where he's like the billboard question, what's on that billboard. Uh, so this is, what is your motto? And I know we all have mm. many, right? What is your motto? And uh, I would like for everyone to answer this. I'll go first. My motto currently is that all parts of your story will be used. And that comes from me always wanting to rip out chapters, uh, things I, you know, that didn't work out, relationships that have expired, things lined with shame and guilt. Uh, but now knowing that uh, those are probably some of the most important chapters of my life. So the acceptance of all parts of your story will be used. Mm-hmm. Todd, what's your motto? Um, I guess the, com- the, the more wisdom that I am talking about myself, the more wisdom that I have, the calmer that I feel, and the more I, mm. the less I feel needing to use that wisdom, the calmer I feel. Mm. As mm. I, ironic as that sounds. I love that. Yes. Mm. Dr. Jody, what's your motto? Uh, right now, we were never meant to do this alone. Mm. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sean. It's okay to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You look like a little sad puppy, Sean. Yes. Look at you. Look at your face. Just, he's, he's even looking vulnerable. Sean. <laughs> Love you, Sean. Um, be open to everything but attached to nothing. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Vanessa, what's your motto? Um, I think right now it's to continue to practice the art of trusting Mm. so trusting in the universe trusting in people trusting in myself but i do believe that trust for most of us based on our upbringing experiences i think trust is something that needs to be built i think it's a skill i don't think that a lot of us actually have it Mm -hmm. robin we're gonna end with you what is your motto my motto is twofold first that i believe love changes everything Mm. and create joy. Yeah. I think if we can do that together, create joy for each other and for the world, it, that, that makes a big difference. Yeah. We're going to be all holding hands and creating some joy this weekend. We will. <laughs> um, we are all here promising you a three-second hug. Come. Oh, you're, you're giving those that you're promising that for everybody. Yes, a three second you? hug uh, with eye contact. Come to in bloom. <laughs> oh God, it just keeps building. How do you how do you hug and eye contact? Like, Introverts this- in this room are like just absolutely ripping their skin off right now. Guys, I'm trying to sell this shit. Help me. <laughs> forehead to forehead. <laughs> It's going, to be an, it's going to be an amazing weekend. Um, there are also uh, people that aren't in this room yes. that are also attending. So uh, this, mate in the house. Yeah, this is just a taste. Um, it's a little red spoon when you get the ice cream. It's just a taste. So come and um, this weekend. Uh, Robin, do you want to give out a discount code and also anything else, logistics? Oh, my goodness. Where, where to sign up? Blah, blah, blah. Well, that well, uh, it'll be in my show website. notes. It'll be on my show notes. Yes, Uh, it will be. The website website. is Mm realloveready.com. And all the tickets, there's links for virtual. We had had over 300 people join us last year virtually. And this year, we're going to far exceed that. So if you can't come in person, of course, you can join from anywhere. And there's going to be a one-week recorded um, accessibility. So, I mean, it's a long day to watch from a computer, but you can watch it for a week after in different snippets. So that's, that's a beautiful cool. thing. Um, hey, and, Robin, no, fuck that. You come in person, come in person. Yes, I, I, no, I really, I do want people to join us in person. Of course, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yes, come in person. please come in person. Yeah. And no uh, hugs, no <laughs> hugs if you come virtually. That's right. So the discount code is in bloom 25 for 25% off any ticket. So please come. Ooh. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank yeah, you, Josh, right. for hosting I'm this. Sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's our fault because our Wi-Fi is shitty here up in the, the hills. Um, can you say the discount code one more time? I think you just cut off. Just in case. Yeah, just in case. In Bloom, off. 25. Yep. Perfect. Nice. So that's right, 25% everyone. off.
Love it. Yeah. We'll see you there. And everyone, thank you for hanging out with me this morning. Thank you oh, so Robin, much. Robin, hey, thank you for bringing us all together. All the uh, yeah. the, the uh, robot yeah. lions coming together to make this. The robot lions. Speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm 51, 80s. Okay. Robin, thank you for, uh, oh. you know, bringing thank this together. You. Yep. It's my greatest, my greatest together. joy, for sure. All right, everyone. Thank you. Be well. See you soon. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Visit realloveready.com to continue learning with us. Please rate and review this podcast. Your feedback helps us get you the tools and guidance you need to form more loving relationships and create positive change in your life. We at Real Love Ready acknowledge and express gratitude for the Coast Salish people the stewards of the land on which we work and play, and encourage you to take a moment to acknowledge and express gratitude for those that have stewarded and continue to steward the land that you live on as well. Many blessings and much love.